Pastor Holt here with a special power shot just for the shepherds. What do you do when the shepherd comes under attack? Had an experience and I thought I would share with you based on what we've been seeing in the news and in our society. Um, people leaving the small church, going to the big church. People leaving the big church, going to the small church. The, the financial problem in the church. Um, if, you've, if you've been reading the latest polls and the latest articles about the church, people having lost confidence in the pastor, having lost confidence in the church. And then something the Lord has spoken to me earlier uh, when he said to me, you've lost confidence in me. And you can imagine when I heard that, how I felt. Lord, I, I've been studying your word. I've been uh, at that church being faithful. I've been giving up my money to make up the shortcomings. And wow, to hear the Lord say that to me, you can imagine was hard. And, and maybe you have found yourself in that same situation. And, and maybe you didn't know it like I didn't know it. Um, in 2009, the early part of 2009, uh, latter part of 2008, early part of 2009, 14 of our members lost their job. And our income fell 50%. Um, the year after, two or three of our best, our greatest financial uh, members left the church. Um, we don't really have a lot of members leaving the leaving our church, thank God. But when some of your key people leave the church, it has a negative effect. And as I sought the Lord, Lord, what's going on here? What's what's going on in our finances? Uh, uh, the church is doing a lot, but I really don't see true growth. And as pastors, we don't just measure people sitting in the church in the chair as growth. And so I was saying, Lord, we don't, I'm not really seeing the true long-term growth that I, I expect in the church. And the Lord started allowing me to see that the shepherd has come under attack. Now, you need to understand that the Lord chose the sheep as the model and not the cattle. The cattle has to be pushed. The cattle has to be prodded. The cattle has to be whipped and made to go forward. The cattle will stray and you have to come pulling back. But the model the Lord gave was the shepherd, uh, was the sheep. The sheep follows a shepherd. The sheep, the Bible says, obeys the voice that they've grown accustomed to. The sheep trust the shepherd. And so you can imagine when um, a shepherd comes under attack, what that does to the sheep and to the shepherd. Because let's face it, most of us as shepherds, we spend a large percentage of our time thinking of other people. We spend a large part of our time uh, when we are studying, thinking about what we're going to give to other people instead of reading the word for ourselves. We spend a large percentage of our finances, our energy, our family's energy on our churches. And so when we come under attack, that's not a position that we're accustomed to seeing. And there's a lot of people who understand this, this saying or this verse, um, strike the shepherd and the sheep will follow, the sheep will flee. Well, when a shepherd comes under attack, a shepherd, a sheep who, who uh, depends on the shepherd and has never seen that shepherd uh, lose that strong position, become unsteady, uh, become worried over what they see, they get worried and they naturally move, they flee. And so what we want to do, what I am praying happens in the church is that the shepherds would steady themselves and trust God, that the shepherds would look at themselves like I've had to look at myself and to see whether I was actually in the faith or whether like I was doing going through the motions, being dedicated, trusting people to help me, but not really trusting God. And, and so when I began to look at what God was saying, I found myself looking at uh, what was happening on Sunday mornings, 
did we have enough money coming in the church? And if we didn't have enough money, what could I do to go make up the shortcomings? Um, uh, if, if we didn't have enough people, we have to go get more people. So we go do more church to get more people. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with those things because that's how we grow our church. We grow our church through evangelism and church growth principles. But when those things replace our confidence, our, 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 our reliance on God, those things are wrong. And so the Lord gave me three things that helped me that hopefully might help you. One, that's praying. You got to get back to praying, but not just praying because I was doing a whole bunch of praying. But you got to pray the solution and not the problem. Uh, Mark, the 11 chapter says that if we believe when we pray, we can have what we've been praying for. And so many times we are busy praying, God, this is the problem. This is the circumstances I'm in. This is the solution I'm, I find myself in. And really what we're doing we're using prayer as a method of venting because we don't have anyone. Uh, typically, pastors don't have anyone that they can talk to. And so we have made God our psychiatrist instead of making God our true source. And so you're going to have to uh, reorient yourself back to a solution-based praying, a solution-based prayer system. God, you are my source. And Father, I need this, and I'm looking to you. I'm going to follow your word, and I'm going to pray your word, and not just the problem. Um, second thing, you're going to have to determine what kind of shepherd you're going to be. In uh, Jeremiah 25 and John 10, uh, it says this. Well, you shepherds, cry out. Roll in the dust, you masters of the flock. The day of your slaughter has arrived. You will fall and shatter like a fragile vase. The shepherds have no place to hide. The masters of the flock can't escape. Hear the cry of the shepherds and the sobbing of the masters of the flock because the Lord has ravaged their pasture. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd puts the sheep before himself sacrificing himself if necessary. A hired man is not a real shepherd. The sheep means nothing to him. He sees a wolf come and runs for it, leaving the sheep to be ravaged and scattered by the wolf. He's only in it for the money. The sheep doesn't matter to him. Now, that might seem pretty harsh to the shepherds, but you're going to have to determine what kind of shepherd you will be. Are you a shepherd that, that um, is in it for the money? Are you going to be a crooked shepherd? Are you going to be a shepherd that uses God's sheep for your source? Um, are, are you going to be the shepherd that gives their life for the sheep? Because Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the chief shepherd. Um, I, one of the things that has helped me as pastor is to know that I am really the under shepherd. And while I may be the pastor, I'm really the under shepherd. And these people are Jesus's sheep. They are Jesus's people. And so uh, if, you, if you have found yourself so frustrated at your church that you're talking about your your church, you're talking about your members, you are cursing the ground that the Lord has given you to become a blessing for you. The Bible says you are a gift in Jeremiah, the third chapter says, I give you to people. I send shepherds after my own heart. That makes you a gift. And so you're going to have to ask, say to yourself, this is the kind of shepherd I choose to be. And, and then thirdly, you're going to have to kind of rethink the way you do church. I have had to rethink the way I do things. Um, I, my training, I was trained by um, a phenomenal pastor. I've never had bad pastors in my life. Me, myself, I can't speak for you, but I have never had bad pastors. The Lord has blessed me with good teachers. But I've, I have found myself 
having to reorient my thinking on how I approach church. Um, 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 one of the things is how we do church. And, and if, you, if you have been doing church the same way you've been doing church for 30 or 40 years, and it's getting stale, it's getting old, your people are losing interest, people aren't coming, you might need to rethink how you do church. Look at, look at how you're doing your program. Second, you might want to think about utilizing technology, like the Internet, video like I'm doing, uh, commercials, um, whatever you can do to connect to as many people as you can. Uh, and I'll say to you what a banker said to me, you're going to have to get more people in your church. And I felt like saying to him, duh. But the reality was, how? How do you do that? And, and I was saying, Lord, I'm doing all that I know to do. And um, the Lord gave my wife a word. She said, you're going to have to go to the fish's mouth. And as I meditated on what does that mean, you're going to have to trust God. You're going to have to rely on God to show you how. There is a way that, that will work for you. There is a people that God has for you. There is a plan that God has for you. And if you will follow him, if you will trust him, if you will reconnect to your purpose, your vision, your destiny, you will be successful. The other thing you need to do is um, add to your faith. But the book of Peter says, add to your faith, knowledge and wisdom and brother. God. Well, it, it's not just enough to have faith. Confidence builds faith. You need confidence. For your faith to work. And that's what I had lost. I lost my confidence. I, I believe God. But there was an expectancy. That, that I dropped. I dropped this expectancy. That God would do it. And, and what I picked up was that I had to do it. And that made pastoring very hard. I still love to pastor. I love my people. That the Lord had given me. But I felt I had to do it. And, 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 and so. You're going to have to add to your faith. You're going to have to look around and see what you lack. See what you lack and begin to pray about it. See what you lack and begin to plan for it. See what you lack and begin to work for it and to ask God for it. Maybe you need spe special help. Maybe you need certain people. Well, get it in there. Seek God for it and see what God will do for you. Third, um, tithe. This is something that's very difficult for, our pa for pastors um, because we typically think of tithing just from the, the member's perspective. Tithing is not an Old Testament item. Tithing is not an Old Covenant. Tithing is actually before the Old Testament, before the Old Covenant. It was instituted under Abraham. And when the giving of the law was given, though, those represent the protocol. The, the rules governing it. And then if you get over into the New Testament over in uh, Hebrews 7, well, it tells you that you have an obligation to receive the tithe and to bless the people. But if you look in uh, the book of Nehemiah and the book of uh, Numbers, you will see that you are to tithe a tithe of the tithe. You are supposed to give a tenth of your tithe as a pastor, as a shepherd, as a priest. And so what you're going to have to find is somebody that you can tithe into. Now, if you're like our organization, we give big, we give heavy. And, 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 I, and I would find myself having to meet my organization obligations and, and having to pay my bills and not having enough to do both and say, well, Lord, this represents my tithe. But it didn't. It doesn't. And and sometimes you're going to have to say, I can't do this thing that you're asking me to do because I have to do God's work first. And so you're going to have to get back to tithing the tithe. You're going to have to give a tithe of a tithe so that the Lord can bless your work. Listen, giving is the fundamental teaching that we all teach. If we don't teach our people to give, they can't prosper. If we don't teach our people to tithe, they will be cursed. And when they, when they are cursed, what they're actually doing is disconnecting themselves from God's blessing covenant and reconnecting to sickness, poverty, and death. And so we are, we are the ones that have to prevent that from happening. So 
Keep yourself focused on your task. Be strong in the Lord. Have fun pastoring. Be responsible to somebody. Be committed to somebody. And you'll start to see, like I'm starting to see, ministry growing in you.